Very good. We got the recorder going. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Guys, welcome to the call. Welcome to the Senior Solutions uh, Friday agency call. Today's topic is going to be on uh, goal setting. Okay, and goal setting is something that I have to say is very near and dear to my heart because I can tell you this, in the past I have not always been a very good goal setter. In other words, I, I would have goals, but they would only be in my mind. Uh, they weren't written down. I really didn't have a goal. I didn't have a game plan on how to um, achieve goals. And really, before I, I, you know, before I really understood the formula for goal setting, I got to be honest. Um, you know, I thought goal setting and writing your goals down and all that was just a bunch of hoopla and and a bunch of rah rah and, and that you really didn't need to do that. And because I'd always figured out a way, some way to make money. But then what I really noticed and what I found out is that it's the the most successful people, the people that are at the top tiers, the the top income earners, the people that were exceeding, the people that had income, the people that were exceeding in life, and the people that I admired and where I wanted to achieve, I found out that, that all of these people um, had similar thoughts and, and uh, you know, were, were, were writing their goals down and creating a game plan to achieve their goals. So, you know, I really, I really started goal setting. I really started getting serious about it about five or six years ago. And like I said, before then, I really gave it lip service. You know, I really had goals, but I had goals, but they really weren't real goals because I didn't even have them written down. And I can tell you this, if, if your goals are not written down and you don't look at them um, every day or at least uh, a couple times a week, and if you don't have a plan to achieve your goals, they're really not goals at all. It's more of a dream or, or a wish or, or, you know, a pipe dream. So, and, and, and the one thing about goal setting is that um, I believe is that having... Having goals is important, but the one thing, the big mistake I see a lot of people make is that they set these huge goals that are, you know, a year, two years, three years, five years in advance, um, and maybe they write it down, maybe they don't, but they never really put a game plan together. And I can tell you this, it's important to have long-term goals, and I'm, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing to have, but you have to have short-term goals. And, and I would say even more important, your short-term goals are, are really almost more important than your, your long-term goals. Because without your short-term goals, you're never going to be able to hit your long-term goals. So yeah, you know, envision and have a vision of where you want to be in three to five years. But more importantly, it's it's more important to understand is where do you want to be in the next year? You know, what is your income? What is it you want to achieve financially in the next year? Then you have to break that down quarterly. What does that look like in a quarterly basis? What does it look like in a monthly basis? What is your what are your weekly goals? And then it needs to be broken down to your daily goals. And ultimately, your daily goals are what's really going to determine your success. It's what you're doing daily. And here's the thing I always ask myself is that what are my what are my daily goals making me do differently today than I wouldn't normally do? And if your goals aren't making you do something different, then you're not stretching yourself enough. They're really they're 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 really not they're really not goals. Okay? And the one thing that I think is is very important in, in goal setting is that it's very easy to be a goal setter but I think it's more important to be a goal getter. You got to get those goals. And just one side note before we get started, and I and I get into the my, the material that I've written down, is that um, you know set your goals, but don't. I'm I'm not a big believer that you need to have a hundred goals. Okay. Um, sometimes having too many goals, as you can get you can get confused. It's better to have a few goals and have those goals be obtainable and reachable 
um, than to have a bunch of goals and you just you'll end up frustrating yourself. And I think goals goals are sometimes like art that the eye that the, the sometimes like art that the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So not here's the thing, not everybody is going to appreciate what your goals are, okay? And there are many components to, to goal setting and achieving your goals. The first thing you got to do when you when you're goal setting is that you really have to decide whether you're interested in achieving your goals or are you committed to achieving your goals. And what's the difference you ask? Well, here's what I know is if you're if you're only interested in achieving your goals, then you're only going to do the minimum. You're only going to do the minimum that's required. You're going to do what's easy. You're going to do what's convenient, and you're going to do what everyone else is doing when you're interested. But guys, when you make the decision to be committed, when you when you make the decision to be committed, then you'll be able to achieve any goal you set. See, when you're committed, what I found, and like when I committed myself to achieving my goals, then I was committed to to learn the skills and the knowledge required to be successful in the field that I desire to be successful in, which is the insurance business. And then only when you're committed, then you will do everything that's required of you. For example, you'll you'll learn and you'll practice the sales scripts. Uh, you'll become a master of the products. You'll become a field underwriting guru. When you're committed, and only when you're committed, then you'll become a master closer and when you're committed, and, and I should say with commitment, comes passion. See, when you're committed, and, and only when you're committed, you'll start eliminating all the excuses. And you'll start to accept 100% responsibility for where you are in life. Because when you're committed, you'll stop placing the blame on others and, and situations. You'll stop saying to yourself, well... I'm not being successful because I don't have the knowledge, I don't have the education, and what other, you know, any other reasons that you have, you know, why you think you're not successful. When you're committed, you got to start putting all your attention and your focus on how you will and how you can achieve your goals. And being focused, you got to be precise. You got to be precise on exactly what it is you desire to achieve. It can't be some broad, you know, vague thing. It's got to be, you have to narrow your focus because what I know is what you focus on will expand and what you focus on, you will achieve. And you got to ask yourself specifically, what is it that you want to achieve? And the reason why you need to be specific is because when you're, when you're specific and you narrow your focus, Guys, you're actually you're sending a signal with instructions to your brain on how to accomplish that goal. And what I have found is that people who learn how to focus on exactly what they want, those folks will achieve their goals at a significantly higher percentage than those that don't have clarity of focus. So you have to learn to focus on your goals. So here's what you got to ask yourself. What is it that you want to achieve financially? You know, most of us got into the insurance business because we want to make a lot of money. Okay, so let's look at it this way. How much do you desire to earn, let's say, in the next next six months? Or how much do you desire to earn in the next calendar year? And here's what I can tell you. It's important to choose a goal that you've never hit before. Okay, you need to stretch yourself. Okay, now your goals should stretch you, but at the same time, your goals need to be realistic. Because here's a problem. If you set your goals so high, and if you set your goals too high and they're unobtainable, oftentimes what that will lead to, it will lead to two things. It will lead to disappointment and procrastination. And then you'll throw your goals away and, you know, it's it, it, it won't work that way. So your goals need to stretch yourself, but they also need to be realistic. Here, here's an example. Let's say you're coming into this business, and let's say the most that you ever earned in a calendar year is maybe fifty or sixty grand. Okay, 
and you're coming into the insurance business and you're hearing all these big numbers and you say to yourself, you know, I'm going to make 250000 or 300000 this year. Okay, well, I can tell you that's, you know, if, if, if you have the mindset of someone making 50 to 60 grand, I can tell you this is that a quarter of a million or 300,000, I'm just being honest, is probably not a very realistic goal. You know, how about starting out with a goal of 100,000 or maybe 150,000? You know, I think that would be more in the game. Remember, you can always push your goals higher. The big mistake I see uh, with a lot of people in goal setting is they let their current circumstances, like where they are in life now or their bank account or maybe their past history, they let all this dictate what they can do today or tomorrow or even in the future. It's important, don't allow your past or your current circumstances to control your thinking or your goal setting. And the reason this is important is, is because when you take a look at where you are now or what you've accomplished in the past and you focus on that, then what you're really doing is that you're neurologically creating more of the same without even realizing it. And we're going to get into this you know, a little bit later and how we can change some of that. You know, that's why it's important. That's why I think it's important to set a goal that you actually that you don't know how to achieve. It's important to set a goal that actually scares you a little bit. And then, you know, how do you know if your goal is scary is scaring you? Here's a couple of clues. Number one, if your goal is scaring you, it's going to make you feel uncomfortable. Um, you you will have a feeling of some doubt and some fear. Okay, this means that you're out of your comfort zone. And guys, that's good. You want to be out of your comfort zone. You want you want that feeling. That's the feeling that you want, where you kind of get that knot in your stomach. Okay? Step one. Okay, step one to achieving your goals is that you have to have clarity of focus on exactly what it is you want, and you have to have a timeline of when you want to achieve that goal. See, in order to achieve a goal, in, in, in any goal... I believe there's three things that you have to have, and there's an acronym for it. It's STP. STP, like the, like the oil treatment or the gas treatment. Um, what it stands for is you have to have a strategy, you have to have tactics, and you have to have process. And like I said, the, the acronym is STP. But really, your STP is the blueprint to achieve your goals. And without having STP... The, the the you know without having those you really you're you're relying upon hope and luck which everybody on this call knows relying upon hope and luck to succeed does not yield good results so let's first let's talk about strategy what is a what does a strategy look like and this is part of your your goal setting well in the insurance business here's an example of strategy and the strategy would be for example um, how many A leads do you have coming in? What is your what does your lead flow look like on a weekly basis? Are you supplementing your A leads uh, with the other uh, lead types? Are you getting B leads? Are you getting the A minus leads? Are you utilizing telemarketing leads? This would all be part of your strategy. Uh, another part of your strategy would be prospecting. What does your prospecting um, look like? How many door knocks a week are you doing? Are you committed to doing 75 to 100 door knocks a week? Uh, utilizing the phone, are you making a minimum of 150 to 250 phone calls a week? Uh, presentations, are, are you committed? Is, your, is part of your strategy is that you will make 12 to 15 face-to-face -face presentations per week, every week, no matter what? Asking for referrals. You know, with everyone you meet, that's part of your strategy. And I guarantee you, you know, the, the, the people that are at the top of the leaderboard, the Tom Lemons of the world, the Jasons that wrote 30 applications, well, you know, I'm sure in part of those 30 applications, maybe he had some multiple applications. But guys, you don't make, you don't sell 30 applications in a week by only doing 5 to 10 presentations. 
I guarantee, you know, Tom Lemon did probably more than 10 presentations last week. So that's, you know, that's part of, that's part of his strategy. Uh, the T, tactics. Okay, what are the tactics? Well, the tactics have to be um, like some internal stuff, like le learning the sales scripts, learning how to handle rebuttals, knowing how to do an in-home presentation forward and backwards, learning how to overcome um, all the objections, uh, learning how to get into the house, you know, using phrases like, um, you know, it's my job to share, share the information that you had requested, um, using the free memorial guide as a tactic to get into the house to make a presentation, using the RX card to get your foot in the door. Remember, the, 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 the goal of a sales call or, or a phone call or a door knock the whole purpose of doing that is just being able to get your foot in the door. Because once you get, you know, nothing, nothing good happens until you're face-to-face -face with that client. Then you can start building the bond and rapport. Um, also, part of your tactics could be utilizing the delivery notices. Um, also, knowing your carriers. You know, knowing which carrier is going to be the best fit for every client. Uh, you know, in, in, in properly knowing how to field underwrite a policy. These are all part of your tactics. And guys, the process, the P, which stands for process, that's, that's really putting the whole thing together. And, it, and it's following the senior solutions in the YIG cell system. It's proper, properly utilizing all the resources, uh, properly utilizing the, the in-home um, cell system, utilizing the flip chart, also, utilizing the activity tracker, keeping track of your activity, um, using your, your, your production report so you can make your, your follow-up phone calls. The, the process is really, the process is the follow-up and the follow-through. The process is a matter of doing the right things the right way every single day. And guys, this is really... The process is the duplication part of our business. And once you get the process down, once you understand the strategies, the tactics, and the process, then you understand the duplication part. This is really, you know, if you ever want to build a sales team, you got to get this part down because then you can teach this part, the STP, you can teach that to other agents and teach them how to be successful. Okay. The, the next segment, the next part of goal setting has got to be focused on your daily habits. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Your, your daily habits and what you implement into your strategy, your tactics, and your process will ultimately determine your success. The folks at the, the top of the leaderboard, they don't get to the top of the leaderboard by having horrible daily habits. In fact, they have fantastic daily habits. Okay, You must learn and develop the habits of successful people. You know, uh, duplicate the, the, the habits of a, of a Tom Lemon, someone who every week is su succeeding at a high level. And ultimately, I believe, ultimately your daily habits will dictate your success. See, and also your, your goals and your habits have to be in alignment. Here's what I mean by that. If you've got a six-figure goal, if your goal is to make $100,000 a year, then you have to have $100,000 a year habits. You can't keep, you know, if, if your habits are that of someone who makes fifty to $60,000 a year, Though I got I got news for you. Those daily habits aren't going to translate into making a hundred thousand dollars a year. You can't keep doing what you've been doing year after year and expect to, diff to get different results. You have to enhance and re you have to replace your habits. It's very 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 um, very very important. And in fact, um, most people. I have to be honest. I I, I feel most people fail on achieving their goals is because they have terrible daily habits. Now this may sound boring to you, but you must become a creature of habit in daily 
rituals. Successful people have rituals, things that they do every single day. The other thing that's important is that you've got to review your goals. Um, you know, I look at my goals every single day. I have them written down. And one of the reasons why I think this is important, you may think it's corny, but it's really not. There, there's there's a, um, a scientific reason why you want to look at your goals. is because when you review your goals on a daily basis, what you're doing is that you're creating a neurological pattern. Uh, this, this Looking at your goals every day, it becomes like a roadmap of your new goals to your brain. And then your brain, your brain will start seeing things in the physical world that match up with your goals. You know, one of the biggest problems I see is that people never even take the time to write their goals down. And if your goals are never written down, then you can never create that neurological pattern of creating the habits to achieve your goals. I hope that makes sense to you, but it's got to, it, it's why it's so important to write those goals down and to review them every single day because only by doing that can you start creating the daily habits of achieving um, those goals. So what I want everybody to do is, is write your goals down, you know, figure out what it is that you want to, um, you know, financially, what is it you want to create uh, financially in the next six months, the next calendar year, then what we have to do is we have to create the blueprint of achieving the goal, which is the STP. The blueprint of achieving your goal is the strategy, the tactics, and the process. And guys, this will start the process, start the process of sending the signals to your brain to create the habits necessary to achieve your goals. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. The next part, the next segment of goal setting has to be your belief and your belief level. Okay, and I truly believe um, that you have, to, you have to truly believe internally that you can achieve your goals. And guys, this is not, the, the belief level, this is not, you know, rah-rah motivation. This is, this is more like inspiration. And what inspires you is going to drive you. See, your, your belief level, your internal belief level is what's going to drive you. If you have a low belief level in yourself, it's going to be very difficult to create the, next, the, the necessary habits. You know, for example, if you want to achieve $100,000 in a calendar year, but your belief level is telling you that you can only achieve $50,000 in a calendar year, based on maybe your, your, your past performance, then what ends up happening is that you end up sending a mixed signal to your brain and you end up sabotaging your own success. So you got to have that belief level. And if you, and if you don't have a, um, you know, if you, if, you, if you feel like you're lacking in belief, you know, some recommendations I could make is, you know, start reading some books. Read some books on on, on self-image, self-worth. Because here's the one thing that I truly believe and I have found even in myself is that I found out that my, my income, my personal income, will never outgrow my self-image. So if I'm looking at myself and I have the self-image of someone who only deserves to make $75,000 a year, that's where I'm going to stay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mentally keep myself there. So we have to, we have, to have the belief in ourselves. And here's the thing. I, everybody on this call, you know, I believe everybody on this call can achieve their goals. I, I believe that everybody, um, you, you deserve everything that you desire. And I believe everybody on the call, I believe we're all good enough and I think we're all smart enough. And the last part of goal setting is developing or discovering your why. And your why spelled W-H-Y. What is your why? You know, why is it that you're setting these goals? And here's what I can tell you. It can't be all about the money. Okay, money is important. But at the end of the day, you know, money is, is nothing more than pieces of green paper. 
It's really about what is that money going to do for you? Why is it important for you to achieve financially what it is that you want to achieve, whether it be a hundred or two hundred or three hundred thousand? You know, how will make how will making more money serve you in your needs? Ask yourself this: How will making two hundred thousand or or even three hundred thousand in a calendar year? How is that going to change your life? And it's critical for you to discover your why. And sometimes you got to dig deep and you got to put it on paper. And you got, just like your goals, you got to look at your why every single day. And every, everybody's why is going to be different. And here's what I have found is that, you know, my why today is a lot different than it was five years ago. You know, for example... Uh, you, you might be coming to us and maybe you have some financial crisis or, or let's say you may even have $50,000 of unsecured credit card debt. So coming into this business, maybe you want to make money because um, you, know, you want to pay off that credit card debt. You want to be out of unsecured debt. Well, once that's done, your, your why and why you want to achieve what it is you want to achieve is going to change. You know, it may it may go from having wanted to pay off fifty thousand dollars of credit card debt to having a hundred thousand dollars in an emergency fund, or being able to take your family on a lifetime uh, vacation. You know, take your family to exotic places every single year. That you know, that may be your why. Everybody's why is going to be a little bit different. So to kind of to kind of recap on this and what you what you need to have in place with the goal setting is the first thing you got to do is you got to write your goals down. Okay, they have to be on paper. Then you have to develop your STP. You've got to develop your strategy, your tactics, and your process to create the habits. And you have to have the daily habits to do that. Okay. Next, you have to work on your belief level. And you have to discover your why. So guys, those are the, the fundamentals of, of, of goal setting. I believe you have to have those fundamentals to, to, to start. Now here's something that I think should be very encouraging for everybody on this call. Every goal, and I, and I encourage everybody after this call, if you haven't already done it, if you haven't done it for this year, is before Monday rolls around, Take today, take tomorrow, take this weekend and really develop what your goals are and your strategies, your work on your belief levels and your why and have that done by Monday. And if you've never done this before and if you need some help, I can certainly help you uh, and give you and guide you in the right direction on how to properly set goals. But here's something I was going to tell you that I think should be very, very encouraging for everybody on the call. This weekend, when you write your goals down, every goal that you write down and that you desire to achieve has already been achieved by someone else before you. And that should be encouraging. There's already people in this business that are achieving the financial level that you want to achieve. And the reason why I think that's encouraging because you know it can be done. You just have to duplicate the process in order in order to do it. You, you need to create the 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 daily the daily habits in the in the belief level. Okay? So now that you've got the the tools and really the blueprint on how to properly set goals, um, what I really like to do is just you know, let's talk about putting the goals and how this all kind of uh, equates to our business and kind of do some, uh, what I'd say, kind of some reverse engineering very, very quickly. And I'm going to kind of move through this part of the call uh, fairly quickly because I don't want to keep everybody on the call for, for a long, long time. So let's do some, let's do some reverse engineering, let's say, to say, um, to see how many A leads you would need to achieve your goal. Here's an example of reverse engineering. Let's say your goal is uh, that you want to achieve in your bank account after your lead cost, you want to achieve two thousand dollars a week. Okay, so two thousand dollars a week we all know roughly equals 
about $100,000 in, in a calendar year. Here's what I know. I know on average that for every A lead that you purchase is worth approximately $150 in net commission after your lead cost. And this calculation is based on all leads purchased regardless if you sell the lead. Um, so let's just take the, let's take the income goal of, of $2,000 per week. Simply divide that by the average commission of $150 per lead, uh, which works out to be $13. So what that tells me is that if you have a goal of $2,000 a week in net income and you want to get there by having an A lead or a reoccurring lead order, that simply tells me you need to have a minimum of 13 leads a week coming in to achieve that goal. Okay, another way of looking at it is you can do it based on presentation. Uh, and I'm using the, the average closing ratio of 60% close ratio. What I have found, me personally, is that every time I do a presentation, a presentation to me is worth $250 in commission, whether I close the deal or not. I know if I can get in in, in front of, um, you know, if I can make 10 presentations a week, that's going to equal $2,500 in, in, in commissions. So again, take your $2,000 divided by $250 in commission, that's eight presentations. So again, it's... 13, it's 13 leads a week, it's eight presentations, okay? So if you're not, if you're not taking 13 A leads a week, then you have to, you have to build yourself a strategy as that how are you going to make up for that? How are you going to accomplish your, your eight presentations a week minimum to accomplish your $2,000 a week in income to achieve your goals, and one thing that, that I have found that helps me is tracking my numbers and utilizing the acti activity tracker. So that's why I encourage everybody on the call is utilize the activity tracker and track your activity. Uh, um, account for every phone call that you make, every door knock that you do. Only, only if you're tracking your activity will you then be able to pinpoint and, per, and precisely know what activity is required to achieve the goal that you want to achieve? Meaning, in, in a week, how many door knocks do you need to do? How many phone calls do you need to do? How many presentations? And everybody's um, numbers are going to be slightly different. That's why it's important for you to track your own numbers. You know, the numbers I'm giving you are just averages from numbers that I've tracked from agents, you know, over over the years. So uh, now that you have this, uh, you've got the reverse engineering formula. It's time for you to develop your own income goal. You got to develop the income goal. Then you have to put in place your strategy, tactics, process, have the belief level, and your why. So, guys, these are these are the fundamentals that I believe. Um, that are critical to goal setting. These are the things that have helped me personally um, achieve my goals over the year. So anyway, thank you everybody for being on the call. I hope this has been uh, helpful. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to unmute the call and see if there's any questions. Just give me one second to pause this call. And again, uh, Thank you very much for being on the call. Just give me one second.